Eldritch Knight is one of the most intriguing classes in Baldur's Gate 3. Combining the might of a fighter with the arcane mastery of a wizard, you can cast spells and drop bows on everyone in the lower city. But something is just slightly off, isn't it? In this video today, I want to go over how I would build a true Eldritch Knight, borrowing from a lot of the really strong capabilities of the multi-classing system in BG3. If this is your first time on my channel, the way I do things here is by upfronting the knowledge in my videos to help you decide if it's the right one for you. So, with that being said, if you want to just simply go 12 levels into the Eldritch Knight subclass for fighter, you absolutely can, and it's totally viable. There are limitations in BG3, though, versus 5th edition D&D due to certain cantrips and spells missing from other supplements. But we're going to talk about multi-classing Eldritch Knight with School of Abjuration from Wizard to make you a walking tank that can cast any spell you can scribe. In addition, if you're multi-classing with Wizard, you'll be able to cast 3 and 4 level spells, which you would otherwise not be able to as a pure Eldritch Knight. You can flavor this depending on how you want to play. So on the surface, you just have 6 levels into Eldritch Knight, 6 into Wizard, but if you want more melee capabilities, you go 7 into Eldritch Knight and 5 into Wizard and vice versa. Alternatively, if you want to really ramp up the fighter capabilities, you can switch to different subclasses. But that's essentially the gist of this entire video. If that's all you wanted to know, then please feel free to shut the video down and get back into making your wizard, Harry. Before you head out, though, please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe. Each one of those things helps me out in a huge way. I currently have 89% unsubscribed viewership on the channel, and that's a metric I'm trying to change this year, so every little bit helps. You can jump ahead to any part of this video that interests you the most using the chapters about the timeline in the description. And if you need help with any other subject in Baldur's Gate 3, check out my playlist linked below and at the end of the video. Let's get started here on the real Eldritch Knight build in Baldur's Gate 3. So before we get into anything, I want to talk about your spell slots because this is going to be a really big discussion as far as how you split up the multi-class or pure class of your Eldritch Knight. We'll get into the build and the different things after this point, but if you take away nothing from this video or anything from this video, this is the most important part. So your spell slots when you have a pure character are pretty linear. So if I'm level 12 wizard, it's like this, right? I go all the way up to the sixth level. But when you multi-class in the game, you have what's called a spell caster level, which is basically you take a look at your character level, which is your cumulative total number of levels across all of your multi-class. And then for those multi-classes, you'd look at then your caster level, which are any multi-class levels that you've got. So for example, if I'm a level six fighter, just pure fighter and a level six wizard, then for all intents and purposes, this is my caster level because I have got no levels in my um, fighter. So I would have, uh, I'm sorry, no spell caster levels in my fighter, which would give me four level four or level one slots, three level two slots and three level three slots. So a pure Eldritch Knight at level 12 would have four level one slots and three level two slots. So why this is important is because when you take a look at what happens when you multi-class an Eldritch Knight with a wizard, you get something unique. So let's say I just took six levels into Eldritch Knight and six into wizard. Take a look at what happens. Now, I'm still all intents and purposes an Eldritch Knight because that's what we're starting as. We're starting as a fighter. I get the same amount of first and second level casting spells, but now I can cast third and fourth level spells. And I'm also not limited in my spell choice options. So this is very important. Another option I'm going to present to you is a level 5 wizard with a level 7 Eldritch Knight, which you can see still gives us access to that 4th level spell. And vice versa, a 5 and a 7. So 5 Eldritch Knight, 7 wizard, which is going to give us one more point into wizard. Now this has to do with how these levels break out. There's some rounding done that has, oh, if you're an odd number or an even number. I don't want to bog you down with the actual uh fifth edition rule set for this i just want to show you the actual concrete numbers so i'm going to provide a link to this in the description so you can go ahead and play around with the numbers if you so want if you so wish but we'll, like i said we'll be pretty much be dealing with either six wizard six eldritch knight or a variation of five or seven across eldritch knight and wizard and you can play with this further if you like say hey you know what i've abandoned eldritch knight and wizard i'm going to make my eldritch knight as a paladin and a sorcerer well you know what Here's your 7 into Paladin to get your Aura, and here is your uh, uh, 5 into Sorcerer. So you can see how this all plays itself out for any other class that you want to kind of experiment with. But your spell casting slots is a very big reason why we've gone with 6 levels into Wizard and 6 levels into Eldritch Knight, and not just a limited amount either way. 
And we'll talk more about that too as we talk about our uh, subclass options and what have you. But those are your spell slots. Moving into character creation, we're gonna talk about how we would set this character up. Now, from this point forward, I will not be using this character because I my character, my max level character is a wood elf. So ignore the race I've selected. You can select any race you see fit. Whatever one makes the sense for the sense, makes sense for you and your decision of your Eldritch Knight. Um, the two that I think really stand out are both the Githyanki and the Zariel Tiefling, just because it adds layers of spells into your already present repertoire. Tiefling's going to get Branding Smite and uh, Searing Smite, which is just kind of nice to have. Now, why I like the Gith over the Tiefling is that if you choose to stay as a wizard rather than a fighter for your starting uh, class, you get access to light, medium, short sword, long sword, and great sword proficiencies. So if you start as a wizard, rather than starting as a fighter, you're pretty much set from the start to already go into combat. So you can you can, you can can take that route if you want. Starting as a fighter grants us heavy armor, and I'm gonna assume you're going with heavy armor because that's the, that's the vision I've created for this build. But you can just as easily, like I said, start as a, a wizard. Also with a gith, you get access to mage hand, enhance leap, and misty step, all of which are really great abilities for your character. And lastly, the gith gets access to a lot of really cool, good gith only race locked gear. That if you're a gith, you get more benefits to it. And I'll show some of that off in the gear section. But I think that that's really the big reason I focus so much on gith in this. Because you can get them in Act 1. You can really cheese it up in Act 1 and get the Sword of Planar Blade, Silver Planar, or whatever the hell. It's a really good sword. So you have a lot of access to a lot of strong weapons as a gith that no one else can really tap into. Into our class, again, we're choosing Fighter. You can start with a Wizard if you so wish. It's entirely up to you because the first five, six levels, we're going to be spicing back and forth between Fighter and Wizard anyway. Fighting style, fi <laughs> fighting style is again going to be up to you. Make the decision for yourself of whether or not you want to be a two-handed weapon fighting uh, Eldritch Knight getting into the thick of it or a Sword and Shield one. Keep in mind with the Sword and Shield one, there are a lot of shields that give you spell slots or give you spell DC bonuses or spell attack bonuses bonuses take the route you want if you want to really double down on the very high defensive tanky capabilities of this build please by all means go defense or go dueling defense here is going to give you plus one bonus to your armor class dueling is just going to give you a flat two ban uh, damage here because you're using a sword and a shield conversely too you can go with protection if you want to help out your bros but this one is a little bit more uh locked you need to be around people within five feet um, but again, if you want to go just two-hand weapon and punching things in the face, great weapon is a really good choice here, um, especially because you have access to a lot of really good great weapons early in the game, right? Uh, the, beta, the Blade of Avernus, the Silver Planar Blade, whatever the hell, and the Gith Blades come in all shapes and sizes. Short swords, long swords, great swords, all sorts of different ones. So you have tons of options. And I'll show them all off in the gear, so don't worry about it. For Make that decision when it comes to it. For background, I'm going with Guild Artisan, just because it's a min-max type of approach here. And for abilities, this is going to be kind of wankity and jankity for you. So Strength, we're going to be at 16, and Intelligence, we're going to be at 16, because these are our two primary damage capabilities. All of our spells are going to pull off of Intelligence, and all of our attack damage is going to come off of Strength. Conversely, if you wanted to go with a Dex Fighter instead, you could put these points into dexterity and you could just have a high amount of initiative bonus that you could take advantage of and maybe you don't wear heavy armor so you get the ac bonus if you so wish that is an option just keep in mind this is really rough for your main character because we don't have a lot of points to really squeeze around in different places we've got 10 points here into charisma if you really wanted to get kind of horny with this you could drop two points out here and put them right there if you so wish but to me personally like i think maybe i'd want to just kind of keep uh, 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 there we go. I want to keep my 14 points into constitution just to have a good immediate health. And proficiencies too, I went with perception, intimidation, and then the insight and persuasion ones that we get from our background. This keeps us really good in any kind of main character conversations that we can really push through them. You can also do athletics if you want to do a lot of shoving, which is quite good. Um, I like these options. You can change these options if you see fit. And if you're doing this for maybe uh, Lazelle and you want her to be the, the, the character in question, then don't worry about uh, intimidation or persuasion or any of the conversational ones and screw off charisma. I would say take those points 
and put them into wisdom to help you with saving throws against anything that would hinder your character. Old person, charm, anything of the sort, they're all typically wisdom saves. So right now we're at a plus zero, at eight, we're at a minus one. So this is going to come down to if this is your main character or if this is a companion. Companion, put it into wisdom. Main character, put it into charisma. But just be wary that you're going to really suffer from any kind of things that will lock you down. Leveling this build is going to get a little wonky. You've got a lot to do within the first couple levels. Um, I usually tell people, hey, focus to get to level five with any kind of martial character. But that's not going to be the case here. In fact, at level two, we're going to immediately spice into wizard. Um, you can choose your cantrips and your spells as you see fit, you know, kind of go with whatever ones make the most sense for you. Um, I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to leave everything as is. Uh, as as a character that's going to be up close and personal, though, I would definitely look at stuff like shield here, which is actually going to be quite good for you. Um, maybe mage armor in the very beginning, but it's something that falls off very quickly. Or even stuff that's got kind of some sort of AoE or melee capability, like thunder wave here or a burning hands. Uh, chromatic orb is always just such a good one though so those are just some some really good early uh, skills that you can take that will really get you a lot of uh, early value in the game cantrips too kind of the same overall demeanor i mean maybe get friends if you so wish mage hand if you're gift you're gonna already have it so you can go with something like bone chill or even shocking grasp whatever it is you can also go ray of frost just to get some sort of uh, unlimited range capability but once we've done that we're going to accept it, and we're going to pull into our um, next level as wizard as well, because the key thing here is we want to unlock this subclass feature. The residual magic of your spells forms a ward around you that protects you from harm. How this works is it's with a school of abjuration, so anytime we, ca we cast any kind of abjuration spell in general, it's going to give us some capabilities, right? Um, so we're going we're to keep mage armor on for this, ex for this experiment, and we'll put on this, and that'll do pig, something like that. Um, I don't know, we'll just choose... We'll just choose to, I'm not really thinking about it too much here. But Abjuration really benefits from making your defensive spells have a little bit more oomph to making you more tanky. So let's accept this and let's show you what I mean by that. So when I jump back here into my character, I have this thing right here, Arcane Ward. So your Arcane Ward blocks damage equal to its charges and then loses one charge. Casting Abjuration spells will add charges equal to the level of the spell. So, we're going to cast Mage Armor. Oh, whoops, I've got, me, I've got my armor equipped. Don't mind me, just going to get naked real quick here. Do I have a robe on me? No. And is this medium armor? Remember, your accessories, they will count as armor if need be. I've got my sweet pantaloons on. So this is a two. It's going to go up right now. So now it's a three. So this will remove three damage from me if I get hit and I'm then left with two charges. I get hit again, it takes away two damage from me and I'm left with one charge. The point here is to keep this arcane ward charged up and it's gonna be based off of your wizard levels here. So this will get higher and higher and you can buff it up even more and more as you use abjuration spells and it is really one of the big focal points of this multi-class. It's what's going to allow you as an Eldritch Knight to be very tanky. But back into the level up screen, we're going to switch from Wizard, since we got our subclass active, to Fighter again. And we're going to stay as a Fighter until level 6 Fighter. Uh, level 2 Fighter is going to give us Action Surge, which is huge. But we're just going to go ahead and push our way through this. We're going to get the subclass of Eldritch Knight. Now, you can go with Battlemaster if you really want to just focus on being a martial character that can cast some spells. It's definitely a viable route for a quote-unquote Eldritch Knight. But remember what we talked about earlier. We're using Eldritch Knight to pull more spell slots into our overall package. So, um, this is where I would definitely get stuff like, I, I didn't talk about it earlier, but Blade Ward is really good because... It's an abjuration cantrip that I can cast infinitely, right? It's a level zero spell. I can cast as many times as I want. I'm just going to choose some stuff here just to kind of push me through this process. And we have our expanded spell too because we are an Eldritch Knight. So we get an expanded spell every handful of levels. And we're going to accept this. Also keep in mind too, we have this action. So weapon by, uh, bond, richly bind the weapon in your main hand. The weapon can't be knocked out of your hand and it automatically returns to you when thrown. There's an alternative to this build where people are going with tavern brawler and using throne weapons and spicing in berserker subclasses to get really strong throne weapons. I'm not a big throw 
guy, you can definitely go that route and have a lot of fun with the weapon bond and stuff like that, but it's just not my shtick. So we're going to go ahead and do this. We're into level four. And uh, we'll just choose, I'm just pressing buttons here at this point. Now, let's talk about our feats. Feat options for this character are going to really depend upon how you want this character to be built out from a melee standpoint or from a wizardry standpoint, more or less. Now, since we're going to go fighter up to level six, we're going to benefit from two feats. And then since we're going to take wizard to level six, we're going to get our third feat. Typically... If I did this any other way except for Rogue, I would only get access to two feats because you get you get feats at 4, 8, and 12. The fighter gets them at 4, 6, 8, and 12. So you get access to an additional feat as a fighter and a Rogue. Um, I believe it's Rogue. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. But we have a lot of options here. So I'm going to go through all of them really quick to show those off. And Heavily Armored, you know, we already have our proficiency in Heavy Armor, so it's not really going to be advantageous here. But Heavy Armor Master is, again, what's going to tip us in the favor of being a moving juggernaut. Your strength is increased by one, which is really good. Your incoming damage from non-magical attacks also decreases by three while you're wearing Heavy Armor. Then most Heavy Armor will negate damage by one or two. So that puts you at five damage that's just washed away wearing the Heavy Armor. You factor in your Arcane Ward, and that's more damage that is just washed away from you. It never actually hits you. It's a really awesome wombo combo you can put that in there you, we can use shield master to gain two bonus to our dexterity saving throws while wielding a shield if a spell forces you to make a dex throw you can use a reaction to shield yourself and diminish the effects damage on a failed saving throw you take half on a successful you nullify the damage two really amazing capabilities right there and then kind of dumping more into the uh, melee portion of it you can go savage attacker here to make it so that you roll tw your damage dice twice which is really nice. Use the highest result. You basically get advantage in your damage dice. If you want to go with using a great weapon, you go with great weapon master here to get a lot of damage. And the nicest thing about this, when you really kind of make sure you're taking a look at, is you can make another melee weapon attack as a bonus action if you kill a target or crit hit it. So keep that in mind when you're playing with great weapon master to make sure you don't lose that bonus action if you want to take it. Um, from there, too, you can go with stuff like Polearm Master and, um, what's the other one? Uh, 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 Sentinel. Those are those two go, all, those three all go very well together. Now, if you want to go onto the mage side of things, you definitely want to take a look at stuff like, ooh, no, not visual caster. Uh, Spell Sniper, where is it? Aha, Spell Sniper. I can clearly do my ABCs. But Spell Sniper here, you learn a cantrip, which is lovely, and the number you need to roll a crit hit with spells is reduced by one. So rather than critting on a 20, you crit on a 19 and a 20. This effect can stack from any other items and whatnot that would help you out here. This is a really good one to just kind of get out of the way quickly. Um, Warcaster is very strong, especially for what you're going to be doing. You gain advantage on saving throws to maintain concentration on spells. So any spell you need to concentrate on, you're going to have advantage on it. And you already have a pretty good constitution. You also can use a reaction to cast Shocking Grasp at a target moving out of melee range. So rather than using your opportunity attack, you can just use Shocking Grasp if you so wish. You can get even more spells here by using ma Magic Initiate pulling these from any of the other um uh, what's it called any of the other spell casting classes always really fun and elemental adept is very cool too as well if you want to focus on a very specific element so let's take lightning here for example spells you cast ignore resistance to lightning damage in addition when you deal lightning damage with a spell you cannot roll a one so these are all very strong very good capabilities that you can use of course stuff like ability improvements for two into strength or two into intelligence is always going to be useful you sprinkle that in if you so wish um, other fun things too are mage slayer so that you can help knock out other people's concentration when they've got it lucky is a really good kind of passive bonus for you which gives you luck points that you can re-roll attack rolls ability checks saving throws or make an enemy re-roll their attack rolls really really great all around um kind of like come all abilities that you can use alert is nice here for increased your initiative and you can't be surprised but those are your really strong feed options for this wombo combo of uh, multi-class so into level five for fighter we're going to get one of the most important things an extra attack now it's not as crucial for you because you have so many things that you can do outside of your primary action, right? As a fighter, you either are going to do your primary action to attack things or your bonus action to somehow get you in range to attack things. You have actions with spells, so that's why we did not blitz this as fast. You're level 7 now at this point, so you probably are in somewhere in Act 2. 
So getting this online is going to give you a good power spike regardless. And then into level 6, our final level with Fighter, we get another feat. Now I've gone with Heavy Armor Master. I'm going to go ahead and just take, uh, I'm going to take Savage Attacker. And there we go. Now we can stay here and go Fighter level 7. And what I, we can go Fighter level 7 is it grants us this. You have honed your body in Magic for War. After you cast a cantrip, you can make a weapon attack using a bonus action. So this does grant us... Uh, some nice capabilities. Personally, though, I want the subclass feature of a level 6 Abjuration Wizard, so I'm going to skip on this. It's very good, though, right? Because you cast a cantrip, like uh, our Abjuration Blade Ward, or Shocking Grasp, or Ray of Frost, and then I can still make a weapon attack with my bonus action, which I get extra attack on that weapon attack and bonus action. So just think these things through because you get a lot of layers added in with War Magic that are very fun. Just depends on the type of caster and character you want to be. So let's say here we're going to switch over now to Wizard. Now you can see we're going to get way more spells. Stuff like Magic Weapon is going to be very good for this character. Um, it is a concentration ability though, so keep that in mind. So if you want to say, oh, you know what? I'm going to cast Magic Weapon before I go into a fight. And then I'm going to use Darkness so I can blind everything. Well, they're both concentration, so you're only going to get one of those things. And blind, and blind is very, very good all the way around. We're going to do that. We're going to bring ourselves here. Oh, level 4. What does that mean? Another feat, which is great. So we're level 10, and we've got three feats. That is awesome. Your pure characters, unless they're a fighter or a rogue, are not going to have that. And it's really, really sick. Um, I'm just going to go with it's just Shield Master. There's something quick and easy to pick here. And I'm just choosing spells at random. Um, we already have Mage Hand if we're a gift, but you know what? Whatever. Go ahead. We're good to go here. We'll push this one more up. Level 5. I'm going to pick just two more random spells. Um, it is worth noting, too, you know, you're a, a wizard, Harry. And... As a wizard, you can scribe all these spells. And I'll talk about that more in a second. So give me a, a bit here. But it's nice to be able to do that, which you would not be able to do otherwise. And because of this character's not level 12, we have completed that process there. So we have our completed character. Let's go into some gear now. Now to showcase some of your equipment options here for your character, I don't have a ton of uh, all the really cool ones. There's stuff like the Mace of... Or Blood of Lathander or whatever it is. But that's an Act 1 legendary mace that you can get that's quite good for this character. The Blade of Avernus, which you get right from the ship, right? The Burning Blade. Um, there's also the Silver Blade that you get. The Silver Sword of Plains or something of the sort. It's from the Gith that you'll see in Act 1. You can kind of cheese it and get it, but you can wait until Act 2 or, or I'm sorry, Act 3 to get it otherwise. But just to show off some other examples here, and this just depends too, are you going to be a sword and board uh, Eldritch Knight? Are you going to be a great weapon in Eldritch Knight? It's entirely up to you. But here's the Gith Yankee Great Sword, which you get right in that beginning portion of Act 1 at the Mountain Pass. Um, here's the Long Sword variation. You've probably seen it if you've been playing with Lazelle. You think you short sword. Now, you don't need to be a gith to use these. Keep in mind, it doesn't say, oh, if you're a gith, you get this. We'll talk about that once we get to the, these, all these pieces are gith related. But there's also this weapon, which is really good. Susser Great Sword, which silences targets on hit. You get it in Act 1. It's very, very nice. So you have a lot of really good options for weapons. I haven't showcased a ton here because it depends upon the weapon you want to use. There's a really good halberd you can use if you want to go down the polearm route there's an amazing trident you get right at the very beginning of act three there are so many good weapons that you can spice into as a eldritch knight it just depends on the character you want to make and the nice thing about being a fighter is you can just choose whatever one looks good for you at the time it's really the other gear that matters the most armor options too are really exciting so you have stuff like this the gauntlets of surging accuracy when you use action surge gain 1d4 bonus to attack rolls for the rest of your turn strength saving throws plus one so you would pop your action surge at the very beginning of your turn and the turn that you're going to use an action surge so you basically get a free bless that you can also stack with bless so these are really good as a pure fighter, but you also get Gloves of the Battle Mage's power. When a weapon attack roll inflicts a condition, the wielder gains Arcane Acuity. Effect, uh, affected Entity has a plus one bonus to its spell attack rolls and spell difficulty class per turn remaining. So you can use this to kind of stack up any kind of conditions onto targets that you then get Arcane Acuity that is then going to help you out on any of your actual um, spells that you're going to be casting. Now as far as being a gift goes, you've got these bracers, whatever they're called. You can cast Mage Hands as a bonus action, Strength Saving Throws plus one, and Telekinesis plus five. Or I'm sorry, uh, Telekinesis uh, level five transmutation spell. So 
These are all pretty sick. You don't need to be a gift for this, but this implies you have access to Mage Hand, which you just get access to as a gift, which is really nice. You can get access to it as a wizard. You get the spell, you scribe it, or if you're an arcane trickster, whatever. This is a really nice ability here. Or, I'm sorry, really nice uh, uh, item here. And it's not a piece of armor. It doesn't count as armor if you want to use a non-armor wielding character. Now, the adamantine scale mail is the medium armor you can wear heavy armor remember you're a fighter you started as a fighter so you can use heavy armor with this character and you can still cast with it that's a big thing here with bg3 now this says all incoming damage is reduced by one the heavy armor variant is reduced by two and a, a reeling lasts for three turns also the attacker can't be critical hit that's awesome and you get this right at the kind of like end of act one beginning of act two and you get just the heavy armor version of the medium armor version. It's amazing. Now, as far as a gift version or a gift uh, piece of armor here, uh, psionic ward. If the item detects that the wearer is gith, they have resistance to psychic damage. Whenever the wearer succeeds on a saving throw against a spell, they gain one to four hit points. It's awesome. I mean, you just get this right out the gate. It's a medium armor. I'm, I'm sorry, right out the gate in uh, uh, Act One or Act Three, depending upon when you get it. A great piece of armor here for some just early gear though you can get the boots of very fast blinking which give you misty step again if you're a gith you have misty step the boots of speed which gives you click heels what did i do uh, uh click heels which is going to give you a bonus action your movement speed doubles and enemies have disadvantage on opportunity attacks against you so you can also go with boost of psionic movement when a gith casts fly their next melee weapon attack deals an additional one to four psychic damage and this gives you gith born flying boots so if you are a gith, you can do this. It's another item that is benefiting from being a gith. Speaking of when it comes to the helmet department, circlet of psionic revenge. When you succeed a saving throw, the foe that caused the throw takes one to four psychic damage. Here's the best part about this. Gith also gain one bonus to intelligence, wisdom, charisma, saving throws. Very lovely. Now there is a circlet you can get in act one uh, or act two. Well, you can get a circlet that sets your intelligence to 17. The problem I have with that is that it then removes any other viable helmet in the game because you're locked to that helmet giving you stat bonuses. I just don't like that play. I feel like it causes too narrow of a play, but definitely you can go that route if you so wish. We have the Hat of Fire Acuity. Now, I'm bringing this up because this is just a, a, a wizard item. It's not a fighter item, but you still get, you deal fire damage, you gain arcane acuity for two turns. You gain, you deal fire damage with a spell with an item. So if you have that flaming blade, blurning blade of Avernus, that does fire damage. This gives you arcane acuity. So there's so many ways that you can add and layer in your arcane acuity into your character. Your flawed held dust helmet, the wielder has a two bonus save to saving throws and has constitution saving throw helps here. So this is nice because it helps you out with your concentration. But take a look at all these shields. Look at this photograph. So Kethric shield, gain one bonus to spell save. DC and spell attack rolls. Um, Shield of the Under Oath, or uh, what? Uh, Undevout. Your foes have disadvantage on saving throws to resist your spells or actions that inflict fear. So if you go down that, and also you get an additional one level spell. This one, additional one level spell, and you also get uh, aid. This is a really nice one you get here at Act 2. And I'm showing you all this, all these pieces of gear to show you that you can get really good gear at an early point in the game that still makes your others not viable. It's not something that you need to wait for a long time for the character to kind of pop off. In fact, I think uh, the Spell Crux Amulet is an Act ooh, early Act 2 one. And this just outright gives you uh, replenish an expended spell slot of any level. That's it. As you can get a level 4 spell slot back if you want. You just have to wait long rest to, to replenish it. Um, but you have, will have two ring of mental inhibition. When a foe saves a saving or fails a saving throw against one of your spells or actions, they gain mental fatigue. So they have a penalty to wisdom, intelligence, charisma saving throws for every turn remaining. And lastly, the vivacious cloak, you gain seven temp hit points after casting a spell while in melee. Abjuration blade ward, a burning hand, a shocking grasp, any of your melee capabilities, you're going to get free seven temp hit points for it. So you can really ramp up your character survivability. Spellbooks, again, big portion of this class of wizards in general. But take a look here at our Eldritch Knight. If I was playing just an Eldritch Knight, this is all I would be able to get access to, right? There's no ability to describe. But if I click Wizard, I now can pull in all of these capabilities. So we could just go ahead and click through and just go, oh man, I get all these cool, juicy things, all this stuff. And we go ahead and just learn it. So that is what's going to give us access to our fourth level spells because I didn't choose one. And on top of it too, 
once we get into a higher level, I'll get more spell slots, right? Just that extra level gives us an additional spell slot here into level four. So it's one of the best parts of playing wizard is you just get a whole stash of spells and have a lot of fun. You miss out on five and six, but that's okay. You have all your melee capabilities, but that is one of the best parts about this is pulling in so many fun, different diverse spells. So we're gonna start some combat here to show off this build. And what I totally forgot about is that a cantrip is a level zero spell. So this Adjur Abjuration Cantrip of Blade Ward is not going to increase your Arcane Ward. But I'll tell you what, this level four Stone Skin most certainly will. So we cast that on ourselves, gives us our Arcane Ward, but also Stone Skin has resistance to non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage until long rest. I just have to maintain the concentration on it. So. This is a really awesome way to get a ton of Arcane Ward, and I'm taking half damage from everything. So let's go ahead and start, let's throw some Fisticuffs with this Steel Watcher over here, and see how this goes. So in the actual combat, we have a lot of things that we can do, right? <laughs> Went crazy with a lot of things earlier, but um, I can jump on over here and start doing some melee damage on this guy. and go Fist Fist over here. Um, I can start shooting some Witch Bolts over here. I can start launching some Rays of Frost. And I don't really have a ton of spells active because I haven't been I haven't been compiling spells in this with this character. Um, but you know what? Maybe we just launch a magic missile right now. Let's let's jack it up to level three and let's try and toast her. And does does the damage a magic missile does? You know what? Let's also use our action surge now, and let's get up close and personal and have some fun. So let's go ahead, maybe, and just go with like just a generic last right? They're just using a pretty normal sword. With that, I get a critical hit into them. And then this again. I'm not using a crazy weapon here, which would, would definitely make this a lot more uh, of an oomph. Um, but uh, you know what? Hey, let's go ahead and use our spell slot restoration. And let's go back to level four, get that one back. Now we have a level four spell slot back online. So you can see that this character just has so much going for it. In addition to, since I've spiced into wizard, I have my arcane recovery charges. The number and level of spell slots the arcane recovery action can restore. You cannot restore spell slots above the fifth level. So I can restore one level three, two level ones, I'm sorry, a level two and a level one, uh, three level ones, whatever kind of combination I want, but it's, uh, three is my charge amount. So you have a lot of fun ways that you can really tap into this character. And I don't know the showcase of it doesn't show this character doing tons of damage. And that really wasn't the point. The point was to show you how this character can be very much a toolkit and how it can really apply to a lot of things. If we kind of push through this end turn, uh, yeah, the person's going to take damage over here. Wait till the other one that's closer to me starts attacking me. Um, react. Oh, it's on will. Of course it is. Well, either way. Um, I can take so much damage now because of my Arcane Ward, which has six damage into it. I have Counter Spell on my character, which is a Abjuration Spell. So watch this. Make a creature fail when it casts a spell. Spells of third level or lower can always be interrupted. High level spells are harder, blah, 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 blah. That's how Counter Spell works. But my uh, Arcane Ward is at six. So we Arcane Warded now up to nine, and we were able to... Shut down that spell with counter spell, which just again was an abjuration spell. Good lord, everyone's dying. Um, and our character gained temporary hit points, right? So we just have so many ways to just stay in the fight in a very long term way. But then you can have your barbarian jump in, you can have all of your other spellcasters do their thing. There's so much fun to be had with this multi-class combination but as always guys thank you so much for watching here today if you have any questions if you have any suggestions for gear anything like that spell combinations multi-class combinations let it be known in the comments section below i'm always down for you guys trying to show off as much uh, knowledge and information as you can to help people break into this subclass this game whatever it is but again as always thank you so much for watching here today have a good one and take care